Good afternoon. Welcome to the first Bureau of Business Research webinar of the 2024 Spring Series. Today we'll be looking at the results of the study, an economic impact of Nebraska military assets, an update for fiscal year 2022. This is a study that was completed through a collaboration between the UNL Bureau of Business Research and the Nebraska Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs. Today's presentation is sponsored by the Bureau of Business Research and the Economics Department at the College of Business at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. My name is Mitch Herrian. I serve as a project director at the Bureau of Business Research, and I'm joined today by Phil O'Donnell, who serves as the Military Affairs Liaison with the Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs. Dr. Eric Thompson, the director of the Bureau, was also a co-author on this report. Before we begin our presentation, I'd like to point out several features of the webinar. As you can see, a chat window is available for participants to chat with each other uh, throughout the, pr uh, the presentation. We also have a question and answer window where participants can uh, ask any questions of Phil or I uh, during it, any time during the presentation. Uh, we will most likely wait until the end of the presentation to answer any questions you might have though. I will now turn the presentation over to Phil who will provide an overview of the commission and briefly describe the purpose of this report. Phil. Thank you, Mitch, and thank you to the audience uh, for your active interest in military and veterans affairs in the state of Nebraska. Established in 2016, this 11-member commission strives to preserve and protect military installations across the state, attract new missions and military installations within the state, and serve Nebraska's military and veteran families. Voting members of the commission include the director of Nebraska's Department of Veterans Affairs, the director of Nebraska's Department of Economic Development, the adjutant general of Nebraska's National Guard, and three appointed members from each of Nebraska's three congressional districts. Ex officio non-voting members of the commission include the Veterans Program Coordinator with the Nebraska Department of Labor, the Chair of the State Committee of Nebraska's Employer Supportive Guard and Reserve Organization, the Commander of the 55th Wing, the Commander of the 557th Weather Wing, and the Commander of the United States Strategic Command, all located at Offutt Air Force Base. The key deliverable of the commission is its annual report to the governor and the legislature. Starting in 2017, the commission is contracted with the University of Nebraska uh, to assess the economic impact of Nebraska's military assets. In addition to the economic impact, the annual report includes a summary of military assets in Nebraska, along with commission recommendations to the governor and the legislature. Please know that the entire report is available on the Nebraska Department of Veterans Affairs website at veterans.nebraska.gov. Additionally, please be sure to see veterans.nebraska.gov for virtual chat with state service officers, for information regarding veterans and business, for information regarding veterans legislation, and of course, you will find all of the commission's reports and more information regarding the Nebraska Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs. And with that, I believe I'll turn over our initial findings to Mitch. Uh, thank you, Phil. As Phil mentioned, one of the key deliverables of the report is an economic impact estimate. So looking at the military assets in the state of Nebraska and deriving an economic Im uh, impact estimate of those spending dollars. Um, so there are five separate spending flows that we examine as part of this report. This table lays out what those five different flows are. First, we examine military installations in the state. This includes active duty installations at Offutt Air Force Base and STRATCOM. We also examine Nebraska National Guard and Air National Guard spending and operations. We also consider reserve components, uh, meaning the Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marine reserves that exist here in the state of Nebraska. Second, we examine DOD retiree payments. These are compensation and pay pension payments to eligible DOD retirees that, ex that reside here in the state of Nebraska. Third, we look at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs spending. This is spending in support of VA facilities and vets here in the state of Nebraska. Fourth, we examine U.S. Army Corps of Engineers spending. Uh, as the table shows, this is spending in support of the Corps of Engineers Omaha headquarters, as well as core activities that exist in greater Nebraska. Finally, we examine GI Bill spending. This is spending in support of educational opportunities that are provided through the GI Bill. To provide some detail 
into a few of these different uh, spending flows. This table shows some of the military operations spending here in the state of Nebraska for fiscal year 2022. So the first row shows the personnel and spending that occurred in fiscal year 2022 at Offutt Air Force Base in Stratcom. As the table shows, about 9,200, just over 9,200 individuals were employed at Offutt and Stratcom with about $1.5 billion of spending in fiscal year 2022. The Nebraska National Guard and Air National Guard throughout the state employs about 4,600 individuals with about $240 million of spending. Reserve components employed about 2,000 individuals with about $66 million in spending. And the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had about eight, I'm sorry, 700 employees with about $59 million of spending in fiscal year 2022. As I mentioned, we also consider DOD retiree payments to eligible individuals here in the state of Nebraska. As of fiscal year 2022, there were 13,441 eligible individuals in the state of Nebraska receiving compensation, uh, compensation payments from the DOD. Uh, this totaled $422.4 million in fiscal year 2022. And as we can imagine with the presence of uh, Offutt Air Force Base in, in Bellevue, the greatest proportion of DOD retirees were Air Force retirees with about 7,800 individuals uh, residing in the state of Nebraska and receiving about $270 million in fiscal year 2022. The Department of Veterans Affairs has a considerable presence here in the state of Nebraska. As the table shows, in fiscal year 2022, the VA spent about $1.8 billion here in the state of Nebraska. The greatest proportion of that spending was in support of compensation, uh, compensation and pension payments to uh, VA uh, personnel and retirees. Uh, another considerable uh, spending uh, line was for medical care, presumably medical care to veterans here in the state of Nebraska. To provide a little more detail on VA spending here in the state of Nebraska, I'm going to turn it back over to Phil for a couple slides. Thanks, Mitch. So as you can see, this is actually figure seven on page 34 of the 2023 report. And here we mapped uh, federal VA spending by county in Nebraska using uh, raw data from the National Center for Veterans Analysis and Statistics. Following figure seven, of course, is figure eight on page 34 of the 2023 report. And here we derive federal VA spending per veteran by county in the state of Nebraska. Arguably, this map illustrates the important work of our county veteran service officers, our veteran service organizations, and our state of Nebraska Department of Veterans Affairs state service officers you know, who are dedicated to helping veterans and their families apply for eligible benefits. Okay, thanks, Phil. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the key deliverables is the economic impact estimate. What this slide will show you is a summary of those economic impact estimates for the five separate spending flows I mentioned earlier. Uh, as uh, you can see, this is from table one. This is the executive, in the executive summary of our report if you want to go take a closer look. Um, as the table shows, I guess I should back up and mention how do we derive an economic, economic impact estimate. Uh, essentially, what we do is we look at that direct spending and that direct employment that we examined in the previous slides. Uh, we consider the fact that as uh, military bases, for example, in the state of Nebraska, purchase goods and services from businesses in the state of Nebraska, uh, we consider those indirect spending dollars uh, as well. The third component of an economic, e economic impact estimate is the induced spending that occurs when employees of those businesses that are doing business with a military installation, for example, go and spend their uh, paychecks on consumer goods and services. Uh, you add those various uh, dollar pools up and you get a total economic impact estimate. And again, we did this for si five separate spending flows here in the state of Nebraska. So as the table shows, for military bases, we saw about a $2.6 billion economic impact uh, in fiscal year 2022, supporting about 24,500 jobs. 
Uh, the VA was another considerable had another uh, was another line that had a considerable impact on the state of Nebraska's economy, with about two point six billion dollars supporting about nineteen thousand employees here in the state. Uh, typically, we don't do this in the report, but if you were to add up the the five rows in the output column. It totals about $5.85 billion of economic impact, supporting about 47,727 jobs here in the state of Nebraska. Uh, these numbers have been fairly consistent the past few years. Um, they've moved around a little bit, but the numbers we see this year are fairly consistent with what we've seen in the previous couple of years. Each year, the BBR is asked to conduct special studies that are of interest to the commission. The past several years, we've examined, examined federal contracting dollars here in the state of Nebraska. So uh, we, we visit a website called usaspending.gov. We identify those contracts that are coming to Nebraska, where Nebraska is the primary place of performance, and where the, the funding agency is the Department of Defense or the Department of Veterans Affairs. As the slide shows, we examine how federal contracts are distributed geographically here in the state of Nebraska, as well as how they're distributed across various industries. One thing we added this year that was uh, somewhat novel is we also derived uh, employment estimates. So how do these federal contracting dollars that are coming into the state, uh, how many jobs are those supporting? Uh, can we estimate? To give viewers a sense of what the, those federal contract dollars look like. In fiscal year 2022, we saw about $860 million of federal contracting activity. And again, this is from the Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, that $860 million is up just a little bit from uh, fiscal year 2021 and you know the previous years, but it's a little bit lower than fiscal year 2020, where there were over a billion dollars of uh, federal contract dollar or over a billion dollars uh, of federal contracting coming to the state of Nebraska. How are these dollars distributed across funding agencies within the DOD primarily and the VA? Uh, we can see that Department of Air Force uh, sent about $450 million of contracts to the state of Nebraska, the Department of the Army about $213 million and the Department of Veterans Affairs, about $150 million of uh, contracts, worth of contracts. Geographically, how are these dollars distributed? Uh, not surprisingly, uh, the largest proportion of dollars are, are flowing to Sarpy County, where USDRAPCOM and um, Offutt Air Force Base are located. Second is Douglas County, again, um, some of those dollars are likely in support of Offit and Stratcom activities. Uh, some of those dollars are likely also in support of VA activities here in the state. Third and fourth are Lancaster and Madison counties with substantial numbers as well. Looking at industry, uh, we are interested to see you know when a when a contract comes to Nebraska. What is that? What are those dollars supporting? What industry are those dollars supporting, or what activities are those businesses engaged in that are receiving those contracting dollars? We can see over a half of those contracting dollars are going to businesses engaged in professional scientific, scientific and technical services in the state. Uh, second and third, construction of buildings and heavy and civil engineering construction together. Those, uh, those three industries account for over 75% of the total spending here in the state of Nebraska in 2022. As I mentioned, one of the novel aspects of this year's report or the 2023 report, the most recent report, was to examine the total number of jobs that are supported through these uh, federal contract dollars. In total, uh, we, we estimate about 3,500 jobs were supported. So 3,500 jobs were supported by federal contracting dollars from the VA and the DOD in fiscal year 2022. Again, just to break these out by industry, these correspond with the numbers in the, in the previous slide, more or less, where uh, the greatest employment supported was in the professional scientific and technical services industry, as well as the two uh, large construction 
uh, industries that we saw on the previous slide. With that, I'll turn it over to Phil to talk yep. about some of the recommendations. Yep, uh, thanks, Mitch. I just would like to highlight that this is uh, Table 33 on page 62 as well. And, uh, and thanks for noting the, the, you know, the nearly 3,500 uh, jobs, even though that the numbers here uh, add up to a little less than that. You can see the, the full analysis uh, again on table 33 on page 62 of the report. Thanks. So, yep, yep. Um, for 2023, the commission continued to put forth five recommendations that have their roots in the 2008 Base Realignment and Closure or BRAC Task Force Report. These recommendations include acknowledging the role of inflation in operations and maintenance funding, supporting local subdivisions in their efforts to improve military installations, ensuring governmental entities and developers consider encroachment issues when building near military installations. Additional recommendations include encouraging partnerships with the Department of Defense, supporting legislation or regulatory reform which improves employment or educational opportunities for military personnel and their families. Of note, the recommendation from prior years to provide tax relief to retired military personnel to encourage military retirees to live and work in Nebraska has essentially been achieved. Additionally, the commission report has a section assessing progress toward the Department of Defense State Liaison Office's key issues. Uh, finally, in the report, we also assess the preliminary results and impact of recent military and veteran-related Nebraska legislation uh, going back to 2010. Uh, please be sure to read the entire report for additional context and information. And with that, uh, we have 11 attendees on board. Uh, I think we're ready to open up the floor for questions. Uh, I think uh, one, one question that we often receive is, is that the Commission on Military and Veteran Affairs, the Nebraska Department of Veterans with an apostrophe S affairs, or the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs with an S. And uh, despite our best efforts to understand whether or not you put an S after veterans or an S apostrophe after veterans, um, I think it just goes back to the history of the organizations and and how, how they were uh, designed. Yeah, developed. yeah, I think so. So, so questions. Yep, oh, we have a question. Yes, where can you find a report and a copy of the slides? So we can certainly send out the slides directly. Um, and the commission report is available on veterans.nebraska.gov and, and we can provide you with a, a direct link to that as well. Yep. So if we go back, um, oops, we can't go back to the slide. Go back to the slide. So there we go. Yep, veterans.nebraska.gov uh, slash sign for the Commission on Military Affairs. All right, and then the uh, other option we have is to go ahead and email either Phil or I or both of us, and I can send out a copy of the slides to anyone who's who's interested. Um, and you can also I can also include a link to the to the full report in that response as well. Uh, we're happy to take any other questions that anyone might have at this time. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, if there are no other questions or in the meantime, um, here is a uh, heads up for our next uh, webinar in the webinar series for this spring. Uh, Dr. Thompson will be looking at the impact from Nebraska agricultural cooperatives on March 8th at the same time at noon on, on that Friday. So uh, not seeing any other questions, uh, Phil and I, we'd like to thank you all for joining us. And as always, I'd like to thank Phil and the Commission on Military and Veterans Affairs so for working with us here at the Bureau. Uh, each year we enjoy the opportunity uh, to work with everyone there and uh, continue to learn more uh, about you know the various policy efforts uh, that are going on as well as uh, anything else uh, that we hear about. So uh, again, we really appreciate the, the opportunity to work with the commission on this report. Thank you, Mitch. All right. Uh, with that, I think we can go ahead and sign off. So again, thanks for everyone for, uh, for attending today.